and that the January transfer window is not too far away now. Mm -hmm. uh, the rumours about that one of the players you're looking at, possibly he was with you at Hull City, is Hernandez. Is, is, is he the sort of player? I don't think so. Out? I don't. If you look at the squad, if you look at the squad of players we've got, the one area at the top end of the pitch now we've got a bit of a problem in January because two of them leave, AU and Khadija, go to the African na nations. But I've got six, seven centre forwards, you know. So another one. Um, I think there's other areas need strengthening rather than the top end of the pitch. The clubs invested heavily in the summer. In, in McCormack and Khadija in particular. Then we've got Bonlaw, and then we've got Kozak, and then we've got Gested. And of course, Grealish for me likes to play off the front. So in that area, I'm pretty strong. So I think don't think it's that sort of area which I'm looking at. So Abel, I know very well, brought him here. Um, he's a very, very good player. But at the moment, I think I'm OK at that top end of the pitch. In, in an ideal world, if you could, how many players possibly you, would you look to bring in in January? <laughs> Well, we're always greedy, um, and it's fair to say there's been a fair turnover of players here in the last 12, 18 months. And the one thing I'll always do is, if there's somebody out there that can improve you in January, which is always difficult in January, then we'll be in a position to act. But unless I can find that quality, what makes you act, act, uh, actually better, then you know it could be one player, it could be two players, but I won't just go and bring them in just for the sake of it you know there's no need to you know I've got to give the squad here a chance and of course we're always looking to improve and we will do but the most important thing is getting this squad of players they've got through Jan uh, through December into January and if there's somebody there that can improve the squad then we'll act and uh, Colin Corderwood's now joined you of course from, from, mm -hmm. from Brighton um, when you found out he was interested in the job you're quoted as saying he went straight to the top of your list or yeah. your pile why? <laughs> well, first and foremost, you look at his CV and he's been promoted out of this division twice, I think. He's worked alongside uh, Chris Hutton for a number of years. You just have to look at what the two of them have done at Brighton. They took over Brighton, they were bottom, bottom of the league. They've turned them into a team that could have got and should have got maybe promoted last year. They got 89 points and didn't go up, which is remarkable. They're there or thereabouts again with Brighton. He's did it with Norwich, he's did it with Newcastle. He's had a go at management. Um, a very, very good coach, and the most important thing, he's a very good man, you know, and I think that's vitally important to have an assistant alongside you. If you ask anybody in the game about Colin Calderwood, everybody speaks glowingly of him, and uh, that's testament to him. So I'm delighted we've got him. He did shoot straight to the top of the list, didn't think it was going to be possible, but um, we've got him here. Um, so the wait, as I've just said with players, the wait to get that right one was key. Um, and I'm delighted he's here. So uh, the game against uh, Cardiff, Neil Warnock side on Saturday. Mm. Uh, Neil known for playing 4-1-4-1. When, when you look at setting your team up, you look to, he's possibly going to play that formation, so you set up against that, or do you ignore it? No, no, I, well you can't ignore it. You understand their strengths. They've got a boy who throws it in like Rory Delap. So that's the strength of this. Any time there's a throw in there in, the, in your half and their half our half of the pitch, then it's coming into your box. So you've got to have people who can defend it. That's for sure. But you try and make sure you play to your strengths. The one thing Neil Warner coming to town, you know what you're going to expect. Look, it's quite remarkable of what he achieved last year, what he has done on his CV. He's one of them characters which you either like or dislike. I've got the hugest respect for him of the enthusiasm he still has. You know, he hasn't always managed at the top end, but he's always managed in and around the championship and been hugely successful. And the one thing you know you're going to get tomorrow is you have to roll your sleeves up and be counted because his team will. Otherwise, you don't play for him. So we know what to expect. Big, tough, physical game. Um, so let's bring it on. OK. And just finally, uh, if I may, away from, from Aston Villa Football Club, um, your former sidekick from Hull and, and over probably the last 16 years, Keith Burchett. Uh, yeah. Now he's back in work just down the road at Sully Hall Moors. Yeah. Has he, has he called you and asked for any advice or <laughs> any assistance? Well, I'm delighted, I'm delighted he's, he's back to work and uh, um, he's helped me for the past 16 years. Um, and it, it was fair to say he needed to go in a new direction, really, into maybe the management. I think he's gone in as assistant. So um, I'm delighted for him. Um, I spoke to him only an hour ago, 
so you may be a bit psychic and uh, he was way down to watch a, a team train. He's at the sharp end now, you know, there were a talkie the other night where they got back at three o'clock in the morning and most of the lads were going to work. So hard, hard gig he's got, but um, he's enjoying it and I think that's the main thing and um, he'll make them better.